Among all the strife and stress of politics in everyday life, among the monuments, Roman architecture, and museums, among the hustle and bustle of DC life, who knew the center of the United States administrative body once boasted its own tiny dinosaur dig site? The strange saga of Capital Saurus, the District of Columbia's official dinosaur, begins on a cold January day in 1898. There, at the corner of 1st and F Streets Southeast, construction workers were digging more than 40 feet below the surface to lay sewer pipe as part of City Beautiful Civic Infrastructure upgrades. They suddenly encountered a layer of clay embedded with hard, ironstone lumps. A bit more excavation uncovered a 6-inch piece of preserved bone, a fossil. The project's contractor, J.K. Murphy, quickly delivered it to the Smithsonian, where it wasted away in the collections without extensive analysis due to its fragmentary nature. The bone was rather shoddy. It wouldn't reveal its secrets very easily, but a few things were certain. The bone was the center of a vertebra from the tail of some dinosaur. It seemed to come from the early Cretaceous period, making it some 110 million years old. And the creature that it belonged to appeared to be a theropod. Many decades after the find, and many decades after it left the Smithsonian in the late 1910s, the then curator of vertebrate paleontology, Dr. Charles Gilmore, recounted of the find, about 30 years ago, workmen came upon some curious large bones and brought them to me. One of the bones was a section of the backbone and tail of a dinosaur. Dr. Gilmore, a charming personification of the love child between Uncle Fester and Sam Eagle, was often asked to describe the district's prehistoric landscape. This particular bone was central to his depiction. As he said of this specimen, one of the bones found in Northeast Washington was in a state of almost perfect preservation. It consists of a single tail vertebra that can be recognized as belonging to one of the huge flesh-eating forms of dinosaur, an animal not less than 30 feet in length. This monster, when prowling around on its hind legs, would be approximately 15 feet high. What its presence would mean to a crowd of men and women in the national capital today may be gauged without much difficulty. Visualize to your heart's content an area populated with the horrible forms one sees in nightmares, and you will scarcely go wrong in drawing a picture of the District of Columbia during that distant age. As you can tell, his rhetorical devices were dripping with the pessimistic view many had of dinosaurs at the time. They were simply large, grotesque experiments of evolution, boasting overzealous crests, horns, and teeth, which simply had to be an example of nature selecting for superfluous extravagance. The bones remained in the Smithsonian's collections until 1908, when they were boxed up with a bunch of other DC fossils and sent along to Yale University. Yale Professor of Paleontology Dr. Richard Lowell was tasked by the Maryland Geological Society to produce a report on the area's dinosaurs and needed to include the mysterious bones that would go on to be named Capitalsaurus potens in his manuscript. Dr. Lowell described the bones, measured them, and slapped on a name for bookkeeping. He named them Creosaurus potens and thought they may have belonged to a theropod related to Allosaurus, one of the few large-bodied theropods known at the time. The name Creosaurus was already figured to belong to a fossil, which was actually an Allosaurus, so Creosaurus couldn't be used for this DC fossil. Smithsonian's Dr. Gilmore reanalyzed the bones in 1918 and thought they better belonged to an animal more akin to Dryptosaurus. This Tyrannosauroid was one of the only fairly complete theropod dinosaurs known from this area at the time, and also the largest, so there was at least some logic to it. The remains of Dryptosaurus had been uncovered in nearby New Jersey in 1866 and have since been dated to the Cretaceous just like the DC mystery bones. 
Over the years, it became clear neither assignment was correct, and the species potens had no real taxonomic home. In 1990, local paleontologist Dr. Peter Kranz suggested it was from a dinosaur unique to Washington, and coined the unofficial moniker Capitalsaurus. It might have been a 40-foot-long carnivore, but the materials are very fragmentary. The name, Capitalsaurus, was written informally outside of an academic journal, so it never got to the eyes of people needed to validate the name. It therefore was simply a suggestion as to what to call it. This suggestion was too powerful of an icon to let go, so it remained, unofficially, loved by tons of locals. Of course, fossilized remains in Capitol Hill aren't devoid of politics. In 1998, a DC public school teacher named Julia Jones happened to hear about Capitalsaurus at a National Geographic event and thought it would make a great civics project for her class of fifth graders. The kids swapped their school books for advocacy agendas and descended on City Hill as an army of junior lobbyists. The task was simple. Name Capitalsaurus the official dinosaur of the District of Columbia and vote yes on the Official Dinosaur Designation Act of 1998. Since this task was super easy and took the political mind of fifth graders to complete, which to be fair isn't that far off from the minds of most politicians, it was a very easy thing to pass with the help of the sympathetic city council. The fossil was found on January 28th and it was therefore designated as Capitalsaurus Day. The block-long street where the fossil was found became honored with its rechristening as Capitalsaurus Court, complete with complimentary sign marking the fossil's spot. Though the sign oddly depicts a generalized theropod, Capitalsaurus, chasing down a known herbivorous theropod all the way from Utah, Falcarius. Whatever, I guess. Here's the official list and information included in the act, the Official Dinosaur Act of 1998. Be it enacted by the Council of the District of Columbia that this act may be cited as the Official Dinosaur Act of 1998. Section 2. A. The Capitalsaurus dinosaur was discovered in January 28, 1898 at First and F Streets Southeast in the District of Columbia by workmen during a sewer connection project and is the only known specimen of its kind in the world. B. The Capitalsaurus was a large meat-eating reptile, which may be the ancestor of the Tyrannosaurus rex. C. About 100 million years ago, the Capitalsaurus lived in the District of Columbia with many other dinosaurs, including herbivores. D. During the lifetime of the Capitalsaurus, the District of Columbia resembled the Bayou Country of Southern Louisiana. E. The Capitalsaurus fossil, discovered in 1898, is now at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in the Type Room. F. The capital source is unique to the District of Columbia because its fossil remains have not been discovered anywhere else in the world. G. The vertebra of the dinosaur was given to the Smithsonian Institution as a gift by J. K. Murphy on January 28, 1898 and was recorded as ascension number 33153 and specimen number NMNH 3904. H. District of Columbia, public school students have been studying the capital and many other dinosaurs from this area for years. I. The students have also helped to dig dinosaur fossils, which are now part of the Smithsonian's permanent collection. J. The capital source shall be the official dinosaur of the District of Columbia. Mm hmm, all sounds good to me. We gotta get the other states that don't yet have state fossils or state dinosaurs to get on this. Well, way, way after they get to all the other hefty stuff they have to deal with right now. Capitalsaurus is not the only dinosaur found in Washington, B.C. In fact, there are nine others that preside over all U.S. federal court cases. Oh, wait, those are the wrong ones. My bad. More sewer projects over the years have turned up even larger and sometimes more complete specimens. A few homeowners have even unearthed specimens from their own backyards. The U.S. Capitol was a hustling, bustling place even during the Mesozoic era. Where dinosaur fossils are found is cosmically random. On the whole, we place our arrogant edifices without regard to the location of priceless dinosaur fossils. Consequently, serendipity has placed dinosaur fossils within the boundaries of the District of Columbia. 
That being said, they aren't found everywhere in the capital. Dinosaur fossils are confined to the east of Rock Creek Park. All dinosaur fossils in DC are dated to either 110 to 100 million years ago, or to around 70 million years ago. This makes them all Cretaceous in age. There's two layers of rock which are saturated enough with remains to let some go every once in a while. The Arundel Formation of the Potomac Group and the Severn Formation. The Arundel is lower and older at 100 million years, and the Severn Formation is younger at 70 million years. The Arundel is chock full of rocks made up of sands, clays, and gravels which were laid down on an ancient Atlantic coastal plain which would have looked very similar to today's Louisiana swamps and bayous. The younger Severn layer was warmer and more like present-day Gulf of Mexico. The Arundel preserves mostly fragmentary fossils like Capitalsaurus. A large percentage of these finds are solely represented by teeth. They're what's called tooth taxon. Tooth taxon are everything it says on the tin, animals known only from specimens of teeth. Paleontologists used to think teeth were diagnostic enough to name species and genera with. We've since learned tooth taxon are absolute trash, just total garbo when it comes to telling you anything specific. The only thing isolated grab bag teeth are good for is giving you a general sense of what kinds of animals were making up the biodiversity of the area in a given time. The Arundel preserves a lot of teeth from dromaeosaurs, ornithopods, a notosaur, and even what may be a primitive ceratopsian. Shark teeth are an entirely different situation, so they aren't complete and utter trash, as in the dinosaurs. Those which include more than just chip bits include the long-necked, heavyset Astrodon. This sauropod was a brachiosaur, which represented a transition between the brachiosaurs of the late Jurassic and the brachiosaurs and titanosaurs of the early Cretaceous epoch. Pryoconodon is the name given to a single tooth which belonged to a notosaur of some kind. Paleontologists are miffed they have yet to find even a single floatsome bit of armor from notosaurs since you'd think they'd be as easy to find as their teeth. To this end, many paleontologists in the Maryland sphere referred to the critter as the naked notosaur. Some jetsam ornithopod pieces were tentatively referred to Tenontosaurus, which is a long-tailed Camptosaur doppelganger usually found westward in the states of Montana, Texas, and Wyoming. The bird-adjacent theropods Ornithomimus and Deinonychus also have poker chip fossils coming out of the Arundel, which essentially tells us of their presence, but nothing about how different they were from their western representatives. With this, we can estimate and speculate as to what lived here and what the ecosystems were like. Much of the fossils found are either indicative of or represent exactly the species found in the western states from the same time. Dr. Peter Kranz also uncovered an image which documented the discovery of a mysterious bone found again underneath the streets during the construction of a sewer line. This bone is hard to describe from the picture, but Dr. Kranz tracked down as much detail about it as he could. He found it probably belonged to a dromaeosaur, as it has a lot of hallmarks of these dinosaurs. Apparently, the fossil never got into the hands of the Smithsonian and likely became a paperweight in the office of the DC Department of Public Works and is now lost to time. Dr. Kranz figures the size of the fragment, were it to belong to a dromaeosaur, would represent a giant raptor akin to Utah raptor, which just so happens to also be found in the western states alongside Acrocanthosaurus, Notosaurs, Ornithomimosaurs, sauropods like Astrodon, and Tenontosaurus. This makes the identity of the Capitalsaurus bone likely to point in the direction of a large-bodied allosauroid akin to Acrocanthosaurus. However, this specific of a classification is extremely tentative and not at all scientifically viable. Just cool to know this area was somewhat similar in fauna to places like Texas. There aren't much more tasty tenders on the Capitalsaurus bone for me to discuss. Just like with pretty much every single fossil specimen ever, only more fossils which can be referred to the first one would help uncloud the identity of the Capitalsaurus specimen. I hope you found it interesting, and I hope you have about as happy a 4th of July as you can have given our current circumstances and 
Also, if you're in the US, I guess. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubbinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.